subscribe. Perfect problem two for Math 95, the dreaded word problem. Um, so this is the rowing one. You row seven miles upstream, then seven more miles downstream. It takes eight hours to do this. And there is a current in the river that's three miles per hour. Okay, so what you need to know to do this is that distance is equal to rate times time. This is often written as D equals R times T. Um, so let's see, if we kind of go through this and take out what we can, um, I think what I would do maybe is start with this first sentence right here. The total journey took eight hours. So if I let time one be the amount of time that it takes me to go upstream, and time two the amount of time that it takes me to go downstream, then I know that T1 plus T2 is equal to eight. Okay? Let's see. We have time, it would be nice if we knew something about distance and rate. Let's see, distance, I row seven miles upstream. And seven miles downstream. So what that tells us is D1 is seven, and D2 is seven. Okay? Um, let's see, the current is three miles per hour. I'll hold off a minute on that. The question is asking, how fast do I row? In other words, what we're trying to solve for will be speed here. So maybe we'll let x be the variable that we're trying to solve for. And if we let x be how fast do I row when there is no current, then what we can do is say that r1, which is our speed going upstream, is not quite x, but it's x minus 3. Because x is our speed when there's no current, but we're going upstream and there's a 3 mile per hour current. So we go 3 miles per hour slower. And if R1 is X minus 3, R2 would be X plus 3. All right, and it turns out with this information, we'll be able to solve for everything we need. See, I think the best way to do it, maybe I'll switch colors here, is to take this equation right here, T1 plus T2 equals 8, and we can substitute in, let's see, since distance equals rate times time, if we divide both sides of this equation by R, we get T equals D divided by R. So T1 is D1 divided by R1. And T2 is D2 divided by R2. And if you add those two things together, you get 8. And D1 is 7. R1 is X minus 3. D2 is 7. R2 is X plus 3. And that's equal to 8. So if you can get to here, I think that's the hardest part. Getting to here is changing the word problem into a... Let's see, different, I guess this would be a 7.4 problem. We're adding rational expressions, but the denominators are different here. Um, so anyways, if you can get to here, now we just need to solve this thing for x. Um, I think what you'll want to do, or I guess with an equation, this becomes a 7.5 problem. But at any rate, or maybe even 7.6 problem. At any rate, what you want to do is find the least common denominator. In this case, it's x minus 3 times x plus 3. So what we're going to do is multiply both sides of the equation by x minus 3 times x plus 3. That gives us 7 times x minus 3 times x plus 3 over x minus 3 plus 7 for this 7 times x minus 3 times x plus 3 equals 8 times x minus 3 x plus 3. All right. What's kind of nice now is this x minus 3 and this x minus 3 cancel, this x plus 3 and this x plus 3 cancel, and we have a significantly simpler expression to deal with. 7 times x plus 3 is 7x plus 21. 7 times x minus 3 is 7x minus 21. Um, and x minus 3 times x plus 3 here is x squared minus 9. So really what we have to the right of this equal sign is 8 times x squared plus 9 which is 8x squared minus 72. Um, so to solve this equation, what we want to do is get everything over to one side. Let's see, plus 21 and minus 21 will cancel each other out. Plus 21 and minus 21. So 7x and 7x gives us 14x, which we can subtract over to this side and get 8x squared minus 14x minus 72 equals 0. All right, you try to solve this. Um, we have a 
second degree polynomial, three terms, leading coefficients not a one, so it's one of the tricky ones. Um, you could just solve it the way it's written, but I think it'll make your life a little bit easier to notice that there's a greatest common factor that we can pull out a two from each of these. And get to here. And then if you divide both sides by two, this two goes away. So really what we have to do is solve for when does 4x squared minus 7x minus 36 equal zero. Um, all right, I guess that's something we can do. Four, so we need two numbers that multiply to whatever four times 36 is. You might need a calculator to figure out that that's 144. So we need two numbers that multiply to 144 and add to negative seven. Um, let's see, you might have to mess with that for a second. Up with is, uh, what, nine and 16? Um, oh, sorry, these multiply to negative 144, right? Four times negative 36 is negative 144. So let's see, it'll have to be negative 16 and positive nine. So then what you can do is write 4x squared minus 16x plus 9x minus 36 equals 0. Note I just dropped this 2 right here. It's okay to just drop this 2 because really what I'm going to do is multiply both sides of this equation by 2. And this 0 over 2 is still just 0. Um, so if you're wondering where this 2 went, it ends up it's not important. You can just get rid of it. Um, all right, factor by grouping. Let's see, you pull out a 4x from these first two terms, and you're left with x minus 4. And if you want to be left with x minus 4 over here, what you'd have to pull out is a 9. Then you can pull out an x minus 4 from both of those, and you got 4x plus 9. So what we have is either x minus 4 equals 0 or 4x plus 9 equals 0. Um, if you do 4x plus 9 equals 0, then you get... 4x equals negative 9, so x equals negative 9 fourths, but that doesn't make any sense, right? Speed can't be negative, so it must be this other answer here, x minus 4 equals 0, so x equals 4. Um, speed can't be negative. So we must have that x equals 4. Our speed is 4. That's our final answer. That's the end of this pretty difficult perfect problem.